live from our new studio. So our other studios are under construction, so we're here for the time being, but we have a lot to talk about. And uh, first off, the Tigers are alive. Contrary to what they thought going after their insane night earlier this week, they are alive. We're going to start backwards. They're very much alive. And let's oh, say why yeah. they're alive. We'll start backwards. Uh, essentially, well, the marquee matchup was the Tigers versus the Angels. And we'll talk about that. I think okay. this is the most important thing. We'll talk about that to end the show. We're not okay. to end the show. It's not going to be too long of a show. But the Pirates had to win one of their final four games to officially put the nail in the coffin oh, for the, the Tigers. Tigers. Right. And we'll talk about what happened earlier in the week. So, now, if they won that one game, it would pretty much lock themselves, the Pirates were talking, into the one-game wild card playoff. The game that nobody wants to be in, but at least it gets you... Right, it gets you in the dance. In the playoffs. So, now, the so what happened was they ran into the wrong team at the wrong time. They ran into the Padres. So the Padres, usually about this time of the season, they run into this crazy magic carpet ride where the team camaraderie comes together, really going is. out Thursday night, swimming in the, their starting pitcher's pool, and, 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 and down school, south. going out to eat, going down south, whatever it may be. It all works. But they have some chemistry, and it really translates on and off the field like a real Major League Baseball club. And uh, they, the Pirates ran into them at the wrong time. And I got to say, I'm going to throw two points, even though I wasn't there. I don't dweck. Hank, uh, yeah, Woo. Hank Dweck, he's he, back, he's back. He's back, he's in the ball hard. He's so Hank took a lot of criticism, because uh, everyone said they figured him out. And the off season, he took it He took it hard. No, but even earlier in this season, they said the book was out on him, because I remember when they played the Angels, they just played him deep, and they right. had a bunch of fly balls to the warning. It all changed since. He went to the cages two, three times. He told me he just worked on hitting line drives, and it was evident the other night. He really was roping the ball all night long. He was back into his, you know, last year's, Pinnacle form where he was at. Yeah, he's he's one of those guys that will say, if he hits hard ground balls, you don't want to be in front no, of no, him. He, he hits the ball hard like Ali used to hit the ball hard. Right. That type. And uh, so, yeah, he's coming into form. I know Mike uh, Melech, uh, Solomon, captain, he's been scuffling, so they need other people to pick up the game. Saul Cohen's still hitting. Michael Cohen's still doing his thing. Jackie Cohen's still playing good shortstop. Uh, regardless, the Padres were on their game. Tuna, you got to give him credit. He did. He was pitching to the two batters above the minimum in the shutout. No, game one, not a shutout. No, no, no. in the fifth it. inning, two via double play, which is why it was two batters above the minimum. And then he gave up one measly run in game one, and then game two, he was throwing a shutout until four cosmetic runs after it was already not a game. It was nine nothing. So, we're scored. And of course, when you have the uh, the later draft picks coming through, like Box Dan, Box had a big game. So Box was in contention for Player of the Week. He had right. four hits. He four had eyes, four ribbies. He had saw some, saw on the video some some real hits. And so, Box hit the ball very well. So it's, yeah, like Sandy mentioned, it's all working for them. Padres are six and two. They're in the fast track to get the first seed. It's not locked up. They're yeah, they, only six they, and they have two more games remain. If and they, they lose out, the Brewers would get right. But they need one more game to win. And the way they're playing, it looks like they're going to get it. But you never know. Um, right. On the flip side, the Pirates through three innings. Mark Cohen was throwing lights out. I heard um, he was on his game. Two strikeouts. Their hitting was weak. Uh, it's like I said last week. I don't know what it is. I I I I just don't understand their offense. Just doesn't make sense to me when I look at their lineup that they don't score runs. Right. Bobby Safdie came this season hitting the ball. Not Tana. Bobby Tana. had a weak night. Not Tana had a very weak night. Newly acquired Jordy Ramel. Jordy was, uh, went over. Any all star. He went over. He, he went over took the, the collar with a walk. And to be honest, they just didn't look like they had it going for them. They were just in their own heads, I don't know, something happened between uh, their infielders and their pitcher, and they made some changes, and it just didn't look good. On, it just didn't look like a cohesive club, I heard especially like. when you turn to the other dugout and you see the epitome of a cohesive club. It just, it was the tale of two, uh, two right. worlds right there. I did hear they had a good team email, and they all got along after that. There was awesome. some heads being butt, uh, butted between Jordy and Natan and, and Mark Cohen. And they were trying to all make it work. I think they're going to all have it together. Time is running out. You know, they have to win now one of their final two games to get right. themselves. And if they playoffs. don't, um, they would be put into a playoff, a play-in game. Right, for the final. The wild, wild which play. is absurd. So yeah, now, okay. should not come down to that. Either way, that really wraps up what happened this past Wednesday night. But let's back up. Well, I just wanted to point out one thing. I feel like that Pirate team rallied around, at least I wasn't there the other night, but as a team, the 11 guys rallied around Mark Cohen. 
They love him. They like this man. They rallied around him. Yeah. I'm sorry. Yeah, they rallied around Mark Cohen, and and I think that made them a good team. And somehow, some way, the other night, that rallying. Well, there was different, there him. was different egos at play. There was different comments. So I think they got to get back to. Mark's the guy who's going to take us there. Whether we do it or not, they're a team that's going to need Rara, and they're going to need to have that team unity. And Mark Cohen, by the way, won in the BKS this year. More than that. He's been pitching lights out for the last two years. So that's the guy that he earned his stripes to to be trustworthy. I know he's not the typical. No, no. uh, He's in the echelon of, I'm taking him. I want him on my team as a pitcher. Right. He's a hard guy to hit, but he does walk guys. But sometimes comes to the territory. Anyway, let's wrap it up. Let's wrap that up. Now, this is really what we're all here for. There is... Let's just quickly talk about the games, and let's just then we'll talk about the main topic. Well, the Angels came in at one and three, not being so beautiful. And word right around the league, and it starts right here, was calling them old. They were calling them uh, finished, washed up. These guys are nothing left. And I think what we said struck a chord. I can tell you it struck a chord. When I got to the field that night, I heard quite a few comments from the veterans. elder veterans. Uh, not so happy about what Sam Word has it. We're, uh, we're doing. Word has it, they bought a bulk purchase of Sour Apple 5 Hour Energies yes. and they took it between innings. Now, I don't know how many they had, but between sure innings. hell hell. So, Mikey Mavora, as one, struck the hell out of the ball. He always hit. You know, he, just, you know, he, he didn't have a great night that other night. He, he had a very uh, bad end of the game. He was tired. Um, over the first two weeks, but he came back into form. Listen, Ike, uh, the other night. listen, Ike's one of the best hitters in the league always. He was three for four game one, and I think he had a double in game two. And I'm happy we lit a fire under his uh, ass, if you okay. so to speak. So awesome. that's number one. Norwood, he's been hitting the cover off the yeah, ball all Norwood, year. first time this year, came out of the game without an injury. But I'd like to talk... I think he's using a Swedish masseuse. Uh, masseuse Swedish, that yeah. yeah. Swedish masseuse that uh, before the game bent him into shape. And uh, Isaac looked more limber than usual and more relaxed. So that may have helped him. And he's hitting the ball great all year also. Uh, Ivan the Russian also was uh, doing treatments. Okay. So I want to really focus. <laughs> I wanted to really focus. Game on. one. Game one. No, I want to focus on one more player. Oh, go for it. I want to Ike Chazinov. Oh, okay. Wow. Now, that's a big one. No, I'll tell you why. Well, Ike Chazinov. Right now. All right. Ike Chazinov was dealt. And he wasn't too happy about the way he was treated on his former team, or the team who he actually played. He played with them one game, and they did not respect him. They didn't give him his due. Now, to their respect, uh, Max and even the Tigers, I could look bad at the plate that night. Okay, listen, it, it happened. Anyone could look bad. Alec right. could look bad. And it was his first good. time seeing him. They didn't trust him in the outfield. They didn't trust his positioning. And it was a little bit of a mess. And like Sammy said, he got done. I, know, I played with Ike before. I know what kind of hair he is. I know exactly who he, what he brings to the table as a teammate, what he brings to the table as a player. He's a consummate professional. He That's the word. gets it done, and sometimes it ain't pretty, sometimes it is pretty. But he's a really steady, solid outfielder, which will give you diving plays every now and then, tracks everything, doesn't really screw anything up like people do. And at the plate, he's a good at-bat. As we saw a few weeks ago when DT was turning out at the plate, uh, he was the one who got the hit to tie the game. That's another big, a- big AB people forget. Right. Um, in this game, he told quite a few people, myself included, that he circled the date on the calendar for when he faces the Yadid. Tigers to face it deep because he did treated him not the way he should right. be treated. Now, those, the first week when he was on the Angels, they didn't trust his positioning either, which came back to bite him, if you remember, to right. Michael Solomon and a shot over his head when Barry brought him in. I think they gave him free reign in the outfield no, no, he, right he now. Deserves it. And, He's and, got the right field spot. And I'm actually I'm happy, put out. I'm actually happy to announce it, and I'll say it right now that Ike Chazanov is this week's player, player of the week. POW. Ike's exact stat line was five to seven. Five to seven, seven. Two seven. runs, a double, a pair of ribbies, and he played a strong outfield. And, uh, and a lot well of deserved, and also just the magnitude of the game and how he did it and when he came through. And again, and some of his hits that didn't produce, uh, you know, he got hits with nobody on, but he got the leadoff hit in that magical seventh inning that we're going to talk about very soon. He led it off with a solid line drive. You, get, you lead off with an I'm, I'm all in on Chaz. I'm a big Chaz fan. Uh, I think he's a really good, great guy. You know, let's just give credit to old man Norwood. Great trade trading JoJo Mamie who's going to be a good player. We'll, we'll talk, talk about, about Jojo maybe in a few. 
Uh, but Ike Chazanoff was on the rise, and JoJo made me, listen, he's on the rise in the future, but right now he's what he is, he's a good defender. Well, all is said and done, also, we have to, have to mention, Freddie Hittery had a no-hitter into the fifth inning. So Freddie Hittery ended up throwing a two-hitter. And he threw a two-hitter, uh, so say, what you, say what you want about Freddie Hittery. Freddie Hittery has been pitching great ever since everyone called him out that night when the Padres uh, actually right. hit him hard. Yeah, that's true. He's been pitching well, and they're going to ride. Freddie Hittery, however long he takes them, and if, if he pitches well and doesn't get, uh, you know, hit up or roughed up like he did earlier in the season, they're a good they're team. Fine. They're they're get on. It's softball. Once in a while, people get roughed up, but like you said, that's four straight games where Freddie's pitching well, whether you're a believer or not. Now, I'll say it. I could say Isaac Abukai, okay, uh, a man we talk about, hit the ball hard a lot. In the balls of court, DT was found in the right spot many times. Isaac Noah Dweck, big two points. Played a great, I'm not saying you're good, he played a great shortstop. So their defense behind him was the Shortstop, what's your, what's yes, your figure Isaac Noah played a great shortstop. And uh, Ray S has held his own at third as always. DT at second was a gold glove winner last year. Uh, Continue where he left off. And Ike Mavora played first base, played great at first as well. Doesn't play the conventional first base. He played way off the bag, has another team looking. He's good on pop-ups, he's good on the cutoffs. So their infield was set. They had Joseph Arati in the outfield with, they played four across. Their defense was great, but all that being said, Freddie Hittery threw a two-hit shutout. You can't negate that. He did something right. And in game two, he was only down 3-2 in the seventh inning. Now, let's just fast forward, because we talked a lot about the game, but here's the oh, We spoke a lot about the Angels. Now, we're all for the Angels. Let's shift right. focus to the Tigers. This is where we start. So now, the Tigers... As we know, just needed one game. And they came in, and look at their team. I'm pretty sure two would have clinched them yeah, a while ago. They, they the game. The one would have put them in a good spot. Come on. Put so, good spot. just look at, look, let's understand their team right now. We have Yadid on the mound, but we know what Yadid is. We have Allie Marshall. Marshall. You have Michael Simon. Allie Marshall was playing a great defensive shortstop this season. Right, I'm saying, but Allie's Allie. You yeah, have, exactly. you, come on. You have Sabon, who's having an amazing year offensively yet again. I, I never count him out. You have... Elliot Saka, who's uh, hit, coming. hitting the hell out of the ball in center field. You have Charles Saka at third base. You have Kushner comes up big in big spots, big uh, key yeah. out of bats. Right. Uh, you got to understand this team is a severely underperforming team. I mean, the back end of their lineup has been maligned and talked about that haven't been hitting at all. But those names that Sammy just mentioned, Come on, that's got a result in more than something. It should have result in more than three Ws out right. of ten. And Max Yadier in this night league hits the ball. Yeah, Max is a hitter, and and I just you just mentioned their lineup. I actually want to check the box score uh, of what they did. Uh, well, I know game one was only two hits on the game, and the only two hits. One Teddy Ishkin, yeah, I couldn't get it right now. Teddy Ishkin, he's one of the two hits, and, and Max Yadier was the other. And funny stat we mentioned: Max Yadier broke two no hitters. In the last five years, that was as deep as they went. Uh, Red Nesser. So you're trying to tell me that Freddie Hittery shut down Allen, Sabon, Elliott, uh, Kushner. Belch, Kushner, Albuca. They all had no hits. So, for, again, I, we're not going to be talking about the Angels again, but this is a little bit of a, come on, guys. Come on, man. you got to get hits. That come has, on, man. You know, I don't care how good the defense is in the other end of it. That just doesn't work. Um, it's either so way, <laughs> game two will fast forward to the last key moment which I'm calling right now major conspiracy theories That's here. Good What's going to be more viewed? The play at the plate with Michael Sam Or this one right here? Or this one. So it's a major conspiracy theory right now. And let me just lay it all out there. There are you three. want to watch the play first? Yeah, but there's, I just want to lay it out there before we even look at it. There are three major possibilities. Wait, before we do that, it was bases loaded, two outs in the top of the seventh inning, Max Yadid on the mound against Joseph Ferrati, who, I may say, Max had Joseph Arati's number all night. Struck him out, swinging, um, got him out all night. Maybe Joe had a hit or two, but Max had his number. Basically, now that we lay the time run on third, lead potential winning run on second. Bottom line, the Tigers needed one more out to close out the Angels to get the victory, a much needed victory. And actually, let's just turn around and uh, view Take this videotape. One ball, two strikes, two out. Bases loaded, tying run at third, lead run at second. We're in the top of the seventh. You could feel it. The whole game riding on this one pitch. Oh, oh. that was close. Oh. 
High pop up. Could end the game. He drops the ball. He drops the ball. Two run score. The ball just dropped on a pop up that could potentially end the game. They take the lead in the seventh inning on an infield pop up. You cannot make this up. A cleanly played game. The season could ride on that one play. Okay. Just, wow. Let's just understand what we just saw and let's just digest it. Like I said, there are three major theories at play. Hey, you want to call this conspiracy no, theories? No, no, no. Listen, I'm the king of conspiracy theories. I live for this stuff. So, the first possibility, which was, I just wanted to throw it out there. If you watch Isaac Norwood Dweck, he turns around. And remember that play A Rod where Alex Rodriguez screamed, I got it when he was running from first to second against the Blue Jays. He was from second ago. to third actually when A Rod did. Oh yeah, and, and, and it just it, the guy looked up for a second, the ball dropped, and he said, Bush, did no one say I got it to confuse? I mean, you know what's cool trend? about this anyway? Just the fact whether it did happen or not. The fact that Isaac Norwood could be involved in anything is always what happens. Listen, it's always a possibility. <laughs> Isaac Norwood like, always finds himself in the middle of the mix, whether it was supposed to be or not. Isaac happened to get an amazing clutch hit. I'm not going to forget it. We're first and second. I don't care. Right and, now. And did Norwood perfect. say I got it? I think that's, I don't know, a 40% possibility? Look at it. I'm going to go that high, but okay. Then the second theory, which is most probably what happened, but again, we'll get to the third and really interesting theory. Uh, is Jojo Mamie came creeping up next to David Shrem and he said I got it for a second. Well, to Jojo's credit, we want to end the game. He's been a great defensive player. Yeah, no, he's been a stellar yeah. defender at second. This year, offensively, he was overmatched. But not the point right now. Not the point, he, but defensively he was good. Ground balls and makes every play. Whatever. He crept up. He went for the ball. Got into the... Into said the, I got it. Came into the peripheral vision of David Shrem. Shrem looked up for a now, split Shrem second. said, no, I got it. And if you watch, See it on the highlight. Jojo opens up his hands like, okay, I don't have it. But there's a lot of footsteps. And confusion. And confusion. And the ball Watch drops. David turns his head for about a quarter of a second. By the time he looks up, he doesn't see it. Then the ball drops, and theoretically, that cemented the loss for the Tigers. And Not then, cement, but two runs came over. And that was basically it. And now, what I would like to say, conspiracy theory, call what you may. But I am a firm believer that this is a true possibility. David O'Reilly was coaching Wait, first base. Wait, back up. An hour or two before the game, Sam Loudon couldn't make it. So now, David Shrem was right away one of the pieces. We in the league and hitting right now. He was he told... He probably should have been drafted by Max E.B. before the season. Regardless, Ty, instead so of Ralph Sutton. Eugene asks us, can I get David Shrem? Sure, call him. So he calls him, Shrem's all in. Now let's just understand the playoff picture right now. If the Orioles have the Tigers lose out, their playoff chances skyrocket. So now he's, are you going to say he's going to throw a game? God forbid. David Shrem's an upstanding, uh, high moral, classy guy. He would never do that. He would never do that. We spoke to him about it. He's, he's a no shot. eight years. He won three years. He's a professional. He's a consummate professional. But, but, time out, please. David Harari was also subbing was coaching first base. David O'Reilly is the manager and captain of the Orioles. Maxie did tell me you saw them chit-chatting away in between game one and two, and he said it looked kind of fishy. I, I didn't get many details, but he said, I don't know what they were talking about, but listen, they're teammates, what the hell? Now that play, there's a pop-up. That play, if you look, did David Shrimp drop it on purpose? I can never imagine that. You want to say there's conspiracy theories. It's a theory. Wait. Everything's a possibility. The only thing I would Did say Neil to that, Armstrong work walk on the on the moon? No, the only thing I don't I know. Say, the only thing I will say to that was 9-11 known before 9-11 happened? Who I'm knows? A, I'm a big believer in subconscious. Spygate. I'm a big believer in subconscious. Watergate. Nothing was done intentionally. Pop. Okay. When you're a sub, do you care as much? I, I think I venture to say no, that. that one thing for sure, you don't go the extra mile as a sub. You just don't have that. Which is that. fine. You shouldn't. You don't have again, to sub. I'm putting it on the no, no, you Mount Rushmore of you to conspiracy you theories to. right now. I'm telling you, it's a very strong possibility. I have to honestly think that Joe Mamie, not that he did anything wrong, he was being aggressive. The ball was David's at the end of the day. I'm just saying it's a possibility. I'm throwing it out there. Let us seep in, think about it. Listen, okay. again, as, as, a man, as a man, I know David Shrimp. I think he's the greatest guy in the world. I don't think it's, I don't think so, personally. I'm just giving you an idea and a theory that could potentially be. We like making you think a little bit. Either way, now, um, 
that's the end of the game. Which put Isaac Norwood's team at three and three, okay? And he's right smack in the middle of things. He went from being the old team that everybody wasn't scared about to the hot new team that it's just came out who's hot and when they're and, hot and, and when they get hot. So now I'd say the two hot teams are the Padres and the Angels. The Orioles didn't play last week, which doesn't help them. Right, they're gonna play this coming week. And now next coming week, real quickly. But well, before we get before we get to that, I want to mention something. We mentioned a new um, a new rule that we started, we instituted in this year's league. Yes. The first seed gets to choose their opponent, but... I wanted to make it really yes, clear. We weren't as clear as we should have been. Oh, whatever, okay. we're being clear now. Yes. That one seed gets to choose Two? once the five teams are in, not when the five and the four finish. have a game and finish. Right. You have to choose the winner of the wild card matchup as your choice, or it becomes much more strategic and it helps up schedule-wise, to be honest. No, it's all strategy. But so, one, Plays two, you could choose two, three, you could choose three, or the winner, or the winner of four and five. Not you, if there's one guy you clearly want to play and the other you don't, so then take two or three. I don't care. Exactly. That's what's going to happen. You're going to have a deadline. Again, let's just reiterate it one more time. You the one, the one seat gets to choose the two, the three, or the winner of the four or five. You cannot. You know, so you can't wait for the winner of the four or five. So you have to say, I want whoever that winner is going to be. Okay. So if you pass our deadline, it automatically becomes become seating. seating, and that would make you guys choose the winner of the four and five. No, it would be whoever the winner is. Right. Whatever. Yes, yeah, it would be that one. So seating. regardless of that, that really sums it up. Really quickly, I wanted to uh, go over next week's next schedule. Matchups. We have the Angels playing four games next week to cl to close out their season. Tremendous. They're going against the Pirates. The Pirates. If they lose out, they're really screwed. And the Tigers are, like we said before, way in it. The Tigers are alive. You want to go predictions? I really think the Angels on Monday night, uh, God willing, weather permitting. You, I think the Angels are sweeping. And I guess you weren't there. I was there to actually watch the Pirates play. I don't know. They got to figure a lot out in a real short period of time. And on, and, the, and on the flip side, I don't think the Angels have to figure a lot out. I think they sort of... Uh, Put all their pieces and, and them I, together. And like, uh, you know, listen, I, if the trend goes and it's less than a week later, I, I don't think they're going to win the game. They don't look good. I have to mention one thing about the Angels. I'm sorry, Ray Esses, but the, why am I bringing this up? Because he deserves it. Ray Esses probably had the worst two minutes of coaching of third base in the history of softball. And I'm bringing it up because I think he should be docked and not coach third for the next two weeks. At least a game, just to you know, just game, just, game off to just let him know. It probably should have had them lose the game. Isaac Norwood came up with first and second. I have to draw this out, I'm sorry. Ralph Mendiel was on second and Ralph Chira was on first. Norwood drilled the line drive into the right center field area. Didn't pass anybody, but clear enough for Ralph Mendiel, who's got nice, good, fast legs, score easily. Ralph, I mean, Ray S says, go, go. And then right when Ralph Cheerer turns second, Ray S says, Ralph, hold. So Ralph, to Ralph's. To Ralph's. <laughs> to Ralph. <laughs> deal. Steps on the brakes, halfway down the line, it runs back. And you saw the entire Angel team, their head between their legs. Isaac at first base, I wish I kept the video on for that, was kneeling down on first base, and Ray S just wanted to find a hole to crawl into. Either way, it didn't it More point because of the pop up. And the, Either way, let's go back to what yeah. you were saying. Sorry, one thing, I wanted to mention, sorry. one thing I wanted to mention, we did pick the Pirates not to make the playoffs. That's the true. Season show we, we also <laughs> picked Maxi Deeds Tigers to, to get to the World to Series. Series right. <laughs> so, uh, what do we know? Maybe you know it'll be what? the World Series. It'll be the World Series. <laughs> I think the Angels are going to win two uh, on Monday. And then on Wednesday, the August 3rd, they play the Orioles, and which that, I personally think is going to be a split. It's That has split written all over it because, yes. you know, the Orioles are a better team than what they showed last week, and I think they had good, uh, good players. And then we have the makeup game of the rainout, which was the Orioles versus Padres. Against the Padres, which at that point... It might not even mean anything. It might not mean much, but it could mean first seed for the Padres. Or it could it mean... It could mean first seed for the Orioles, too. Or right. To, you know, so it could mean a lot, either way. It could be a lot. Yeah. So we have a lot going on next week. We look forward to doing this again. A lot uh, of exciting storylines. Looking forward. Uh, it's been a great time. Can't, can't answer better right. than this. Good job, boys. Have a great weekend. Enjoy yourselves till Monday.